Hello, I'm going to talk about proportion. To start some ideas about this topic, let's think about a moving car. Right, so let's say I have a car. moving at a certain speed. So suppose that every minute, well let's say every every hour, okay, in one hour, suppose that it moves by um, 50 kilometers. So every hour, the car travels by 50 kilometers. So by thinking about these two numbers, we are actually thinking of the idea of a time and a distance. Right. And if the car is going at a constant speed, then, after two hours, it would have gone 50, uh, 100 kilometers. After three hours, it would be 150 kilometers. So it will, the distance will keep increasing with the time. Now, what this means is that there is this connection, this relation between the distance and, and the time. As the time increases, so the distance increases. Now, in that way, the distance is related to the time. The distance depends on the time. And of course, the car, the driver in the car, would, he can drive, he or she can drive faster or slower, and he, the, the and he may, may not travel by the same distance um, every hour. He might go a bit more this hour and a bit less the next hour. But suppose that he's going at a constant speed. Then we say that we describe this relation. If the speed is constant, we describe the relation between distance and time by saying that they are directly proportional. So the idea here is that we have two quantities, we have time and the distance. Right? Quantities means something that we can that we can measure, like time or distance or weight. Alright, so if these two quantities are related in such a way that every time the, the, the time increases by say two times the distance was increased by two times and if the time increases by 10 times the distance was increased by 10 times so both quantity must always um, increase by the same number of times so if the relationship is like this then we describe this relation by saying that the two quantities are directly proportional. All right, if one increases by so many times, the other thing must increase by the same number of times. So this is a very simple and, and very, very specific kind of relationship. So when you see the word directly proportional, uh, that's what it means, right? And it doesn't have to be time and distance. It can be any two things like uh, cost and the weight of the apple. So in that sense, you can see that if you look at my video on 
ratio, there is obvious similarity between the idea of proportion and of ratio. Okay, and the next thing about proportion is that it's the opposite, kind of the opposite of the direct proportion. It is called inverse proportion. Or if I, let me describe it by saying, using the word inversely proportional. So what is inversely proportional? What does that mean? Right. Now we have here the idea of the time and the distance. Now I in, in this previous example about directly proportional, I mentioned that the speed is fixed. Right. Now suppose that now I think of another example in which the speed is not fixed but the distance is fixed. So once again, I have a car. Now, but this time, the car goes to a specific place. I have a fixed destination to go to. So, it goes there. And that place is, say, 50 kilometers away. So this time the distance is fixed. Now the driver can drive faster or slower. And if he drives faster, he gets there in a shorter time. If he drives more quickly, uh, if he drives slowly, he gets there in a longer time. Okay, let me write this down. So you have um, speed and you have the time. So if the speed is small, the time is long. Okay, but if it drives quickly, the speed is big, then time is short. So that, that is clear. And the important point here that, that I want to want, want you to think about is the relation between the speed and time. You see, when the speed is small, the time is long. But when the speed is big, the time is short. So it's a kind of an opposite relation. If the speed gets bigger, the time gets shorter. So you can see them going in, in the opposite sense. Now, and in, in this particular example, what we have is a situation where if you increase the speed by two times, the time would reduce by half. Okay, so if I multiply the speed by two, the time would be divided by two. If I multiply the speed, so let me put in some numbers. Um, for example, now I had the example just now. But okay, suppose that the speed is 50 kilometers per hour. So in one hour, it goes 50 kilometers. Then the time taken is one hour to get to the destination. Right. Now, if the speed 
is 50 kilometers per hour. So in one hour you can travel, sorry, 100 kilometers per hour. In one hour you can travel 100 kilometers. Then, then you can cover the 50 kilometers in half an hour. Alright, so what you see here is that I've, if I multiply the speed by 2, the time becomes half. Now, but what if I, I reduce the speed? If, I, if the driver drives at half the speed, at 25 km per hour, right? How long does it take? So in one hour, he, he travels only 25 km. To cover the 50 km, he has to drive for two hours. And what you see now is that if I have divided the 50 km per hour by 2, I have divided the speed by 2, and you find that the time would be multiplied by 2. So that's how these two, two things here are connected. Okay, if I multiply the speed by a certain number, the time will be divided by that number. And if I divide the speed by a certain number, the time will be multiplied. Now, this is a, a, a very specific relation between the two things. And this kind of relation is called an inverse proportion. And we say that we describe this by saying that the speed is inversely proportional to the time taken. We'll stop here.